In this question, we need to be able to understand how a computer can convert sound, that stuff that we can hear, into a digital form, so that's binary zeros and ones. Um, so we've got four statements here in this exam question. We need to understand what each one means and work out what order these stages happen in for a computer to be able to store um, sound as binary data. So let's have a look at a sound file in Audacity. We've got this one just here. Aha! Um, we, we know that a computer can play sound and record sound, but we need to understand how it does that. How is this sound stored as zeros and ones? Okay, so let's have a think what sound is. You can see a speaker here, and a speaker works because it's got a little um, cardboard wobbly thing. We call it a diaphragm. And as the, the cardboard wobbles, it makes the, the air around it also wobble, and we call those vibrations. So if you were to hear this, um, your ear, which has got the, the eardrum inside, um, and the eardrum is a flap of skin that would wobble, and it would wobble at the same speed as the, um, the air vibrates, and the air would vibrate at the same speed as the cardboard here. So your brain would detect those wobbles in the air, and your brain would tell you that you're hearing sound. So, a computer doesn't have ears, uh, the closest it can have is a microphone, and it works in pretty much the same way, but instead of um, an eardrum, a little flap of skin that wobbles, it's got a sensor in here um, that detects the vibrations in the air. Um, so the microphone picks up the sound wave, that's the first stage. So our sensor, the microphone, turns those vibrations into an electrical signal. Um, so this isn't a wire that's wiggling, this is supposed to represent an, an electrical voltage that's changing. Um, so it's converted into an electrical analog signal. Electrical because it means the voltage is changing, and analog because it could be absolutely any value between the minimum and the maximum. So we've taken our sound and turned it into an electrical signal. For our computer to be able to store it, we need to know what value it is at a particular point in time. So this um, arrow represents what we call the sample time. It, it's, it's the point in time that we're reading the voltage from the microphone. So you can see it goes up and down, it changes. Um, so we're reading the, um, the value at a specific point. But this is an analog signal at the moment. It could be anything from the minimum to the maximum and anything in between. We need to choose certain values in between the minimum and maximum so that we can say it's this one, or it's this one, or it's this one. Um, so we're saying we're rounding it to a particular level. So once we've chosen the time that we want to read it and the level that we've read it at, we call that a sample and then we can represent that with binary because we can say the minimum possible value is all zeros, the maximum possible value is, is all ones, and so we can detect and store whatever the value of sound is at that particular moment in time. So our sound is now represented um, and in binary. So each sample is just the volume at one moment in time, so that's not sound yet, that's just um, one fraction of, um, of time, we need to then sample it again a fraction of a second later, and again another fraction of a second later, and again another fraction of a second later. So what you end up with is lots and lots of these readings, lots and lots of these voltage readings that stores how loud the sound is at any point in time. So if we go back to our sound file, we should be able to see if we zoom in here, um, um, you know, that the higher and the taller these lines are means how um, how loud the sound is, but if we keep on zooming in, you'll be able to see the individual samples here. So you can see the distance between them, um, and uh, both horizontally and vertically. So if you sample more times per second, then your sound file is going to sound more detailed, but you're going to need to um, have more zeros and ones to represent it. So more times per second would mean these samples would be closer together. Or you can store your sound in more detail. You can say instead of storing it in 8 bits, um, we could store it in 16 bits or 24 bits. So we can have more levels to choose from, which is like having more of these lines to choose from. Again, the sound file would sound more detailed, but it would take up more space on disk because you're having to store, um, instead of just 8 bits per sample, 16 or 24 bits per sample. So let's recap. First stage, the microphone picks up the sound waves, turns the vibrations into an electrical analog signal. Then we've got to read that 
um, analog signal at a particular point in time and round it to a very specific level. And then we can turn that level, we convert that number into binary and we store that number and then we repeat the same thing back a fraction of a second later. That's how sound is stored in binary data.